what if I tell you that I'm Indian and you deduce that I eat spicy food? Is it safe to infer that? Would that not be stereotyping? Are the machine learning algorithms that we are building void of these biases and stereotypes? Welcome back to another episode of Weekend Musings where we are going to be talking about what data privacy means in the era of data science and AI. Today's talk is inspired by the work done by Professor Sandra Watcher, who is researching on legal and ethical aspects of data science. I recently came across her paper, A Right to Reasonable Inferences, Rethinking Data Protection in the Age of Big Data and AI. And it triggered my sense of awareness and responsibility, not only as a user who is being impacted by these technologies, but also as a data scientist who has been playing a major role in building these technologies. Let's talk about the example that I gave you earlier. The information that was available to you was, I am Indian and the inference that could have been made is, I like spicy food. Yes, some data and statistics might point towards that inference, but in reality, I hate spicy food. So the data I provided you and the inference that you might have derived from it is completely subjective. And how you use that inference to make any decision pertaining to my life is a very critical aspect. Let's look at a similar example from an organization's viewpoint. Your data, including your personal information, critical information like gender, ethnicity, health status, your browser history, likes, dislikes, preferences, your social media activity, basically your entire digital presence is being used to build high impact models. For example, the models that determine you getting insurance, credit card, job, or even getting into a university. In the age of big data and AI, what these data science and machine learning models are doing is inferring using your data, using the data that is available for these models. As users, we have minimal awareness of data that is being collected and absolutely zero information on what is being inferred from them. The worst part happening here that this inferred information is being shared with other organizations and third parties that might be using this to predict something completely different. Looking at this situation from a user's perspective, I as a user feel the need of having the right to know what data is being collected from me, where is it being shared, and how is it being used. Now, putting on a data scientist's hat, I want to build the right models for the customers using my organization's technology, ensuring that these models that I built do not have any biases, they are void of any stereotypes, and they are processed to exclude the humongous negative examples which might trigger a bias in the model and making AI technology ethical and fair. Just by tracking your alarms on the phone, your laptop, your mobile phone activity, I can conclude a lot, of, a lot about your sleeping habits and maybe to some extent your mental health. Now, that piece of information about you is extremely sensitive and letting that information sit with a company without knowing what that might be used for is a very scary thought. There is a very infamous accident that happened with Target being able to predict a teenage girl's pregnancy and sending coupons and advertisements for her maternity clothes and infant products. This apparently turned heads as her family wasn't aware of this until they got a hint from Target's coupon being sent to their house. In 2012, a story was published in the New York Times under the headline, How Companies Learn Your Secrets. 
The article described how the marketing team at Target had built algorithms that could predict that this teenager would be pregnant. What I believe could have happened is that Target was accessing all the data from this, uh, for this person from third parties based on her search terms, her articles that she's been reading on, the pages that she has visited, her browser history, etc. And that would have made them conclude that she might be pregnant. Now, just with this case, we see how your data can be mismanaged and your critical information can be leaked. To keep the videos short, informative and comprehensive, I have split the data privacy episode into two parts. In the second part of the data privacy series, we will be talking about the gender data protection regulations and or the GDPR and the California Consumer Privacy Act, which is CCPA, which are the law enforcements to protect the privacy of the users. And we'll also be looking at some of the data privacy incidents from organizations and data scientists perspective. Till then, have a good day and stay safe.